So in this video, we'll talk about introduction regarding imaging modalities we use in rheumatologic diseases. It's just a general approach of how to use them and when to use them. So we'll start with talking about the X-ray, which is the most common imaging modality used in the hospital. We can use it for acute processes, like a fracture, for example. Also, we can use it in diagnosing chronic processes, for example, inflammation like osteomyelitis, if it's a chronic, or if the patient has ankylosing spondylitis, which is also chronic inflammation. We can also use it for tumors and osteonecrosis as an initial modality. Next, we'll talk about the ultrasound, which is the new fancy modality for rheumatologists. We can use it for osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, more commonly gout and pseudogout. So let's draw a synovial joint here. And we have the cartilage, this green, and a line of calcium that is normally present between the cartilage and the bone. Now, if the patient has gout or pseudogout, he will have deposits on top of the cartilage. You, you can see it on the ultrasound as double lines, like this, and that's why they call it the double contour sign. Now, double contour sign has around 60% specificity in gout patients. And this can increase to up to 90% if the patient has elevated uric acid at the time of gout attack. So it's important to check uric acid during gout attacks for this reason. Next modality we'll talk about is MRI, which is the master of imaging. It can be positive in acute and chronic processes like ankylosing spondylitis or acute osteomyelitis. It can also be positive in osteonecrosis where it is the main diagnostic modality. Also, orthopedic diseases like injuries in the ligaments, tendons, or cartilages. And the last modality we'll talk about is the bone scans. It helps us know what activity the bone has. So if you have high uptake of the radionucleid compound, it means that the osteoblasts are working. If you have less activity, which means destruction of the bone, which means that osteoclasts are working. Now, where we have osteoblast activity more in patient disease mainly, and also one thing that they like to trick you about is the osteophytes that we see in osteoarthritis patients. So make sure to know that osteophytes means osteoblast activity and building bones. Now, osteoclast activity mainly when you have hyperparathyroidism, steroids, or the patient has osteolytic lesion secondary to metastasis. So one of the ways you can differentiate hyperparathyroidism versus steroids, it's the bone involved. In hyperparathyroidism, hips are more involved than the spine, while in steroids, it's going to be the spine more involved than the hips. And that concludes our video about the imaging in rheumatology. See you in the next one.